Hey guys, this is Corey with Northern Timber Outfitters, my buddy Sean. Today we're going to be going over how to build a mallard hen uh, nesting tube. Um, as you can see, we already have two of them made. Um, we're planning to make a whole lot more, but um, Sean's going to kind of go over a brief summary of what, what we're going to be doing. Yep. So a little background on these first. Um, so a lot of times with how the world is changing today, um, ducks kind of lose their um, habitat they nest in or this is also a way to keep them protected from predators because you can put these out in the water and you know foxes raccoons and stuff can't get over to them um, so what we're dealing with here is this is cage fencing it's um, 16 gauge with the two by one inch squares and we have this cut to seven feet in length so when you start um, building this you're going to want to get this cage fencing and then you can get it in different size rolls and you want a 36 by seven foot minimum of 36 by seven foot roll so 36 inches tall seven feet long um we got a, a 36 inch by um 24 foot roll so we still have a couple more to do out of this roll um but this is the one we're going to show you how to do it on um you will also need to get um hog rings or uh, cage fencing clamps that's what we're using today um so they're just you know little clamps and they just hook around um, the hog rings work a lot easier i have a bunch of these pre-bent for us just because they're a little tougher uh to bend you know as you're going but um we're going to use these today just because we had these already and then uh you're gonna need a bale of straw um there's a couple different types of straw you can use but we're using straw and then for the actual like nesting bedding that you want to put inside the tube, you're going to use Timothy hay, which we have a bale of right here. Um, It'll change based on your natural environment. Um, some some places you can get away with different types of grass, but around here um, we'll use Timothy hay. And just a kind of good go-to would be Timothy hay. Yeah, they, um, they can, can use it for nesting and for um, they can, they'll they'll kind of eat at it and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Like you know the hen's sitting on her nest a lot. If you've ever watched a goose or anything while she's on her nest. Um, she's sitting on the nest, there. but she's sitting there and she's feeding in the grass, you know, next to her nest there. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, these are a great way for you guys to just give back to the wildlife and to participate in conservation without being a part of, you know, a big organization or being involved in any events. You can do this on your own. Um, you can put them out on your, your neighbor's pond. If you get permission, your own pond, mm -hmm. um, uh, there is, you know, you'd have to talk to your wildlife agency, but you could probably put them out on a local stream. Um, or a local pond, you know, a lot of township buildings and stuff, township parks have ponds on them. Yeah. That might be go. something that they would be okay with you doing because, you know, people like watching wildlife. And if you're helping to keep the wildlife in the area and keep them on the pond, you know, that's a great thing for parents, you know, to bring your kids, you know, mm -hmm. hey, let's go check out the, you know, the duck nest on the pond, you know. So it's a great way to, for you to just give back. It's a great activity for you to do. It's a great activity to get young people doing. You know, we mentioned that with our wood duck nesting boxes and mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff is just a great, um, it's a great thing to do for. It's just giving back. Yeah, for giving we're, back, we're but hunters. it's a great thing to get young people involved yeah. in too, because they're the future of this. And it doesn't matter how many, well, it doesn't matter, but you know, you can make a bunch right now, but if kids aren't doing it in the future, you know, it's, it's eventually the benefits are going to stop. Yeah. So we're going to dive into this. Um, so here's our seven foot length piece of fence. And what we actually do with this to kind of make things a little easier on us is on this end here, okay, we left um, the, the fencing. About a half to three quarters of an inch long. Fencing. Yep, so what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna measure out three feet from this end of the fence. And the reason why we left those long is so that when we get it over here, um, we can hook it around another piece of the length and that way, we, one of us doesn't have to sit there and hold it with our fingers real tight while we're trying to get the clamps off. So, three feet is right here. So, Corey, if you want to go ahead and roll that up. And you want to roll it. You know, you kind of want to just roll it easy. You, you want it to be round. You don't want it to kind of be squared off. So, it's going to go to this one. Right so, we'll kind of round that out a little more. And then what we're going to do is, is we're going to take these pieces that we left a little long and we're going to hook them around so i got that one hook Corey, you want to hook one there and this will just make it easier on us um you guys can do this too it'll make it a little easier if you're doing this by yourself it's very very helpful to do this and since there's so many of them we're just gonna hook a couple of them around
Be careful with this. This is exposed metal, so just watch your fingers. If you have a pair of pliers, just go ahead and use a pair. Yep. So it makes it a lot easier. We're using needle nose pliers today just because uh, for the clamps that we're using, they kind of work the best. Um, they do make tools for the hog rings and such that you guys can get that make it a lot easier to bend them. So, all right, Corey, that should be good. We'll get yeah. the, the rest of them. Just get this on one. All right. Good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. Corey, if you want to come back on the back side here. Uh, by flipping this over, it kind of just flips this up a little bit. It makes it easier, for one, for us to finish bending those around. And you don't want them bent so that necessarily there's a pointy end sticking up because in here is where the hen's going to nest. So you kind of just want them bent around so that they hold it. And then we're going to start with our clamps. So we take a clamp. And you're going to get it around two little pieces of fencing so that it'll hold them together. And then you will bend one end of your clamp down. And this is if you're using the, the cage uh, clamps. So you bend one end down and then you'll bend the other end over top. Like that. So we are going to do four of these down the, the thing. Uh, we recommend doing four. So that way it just gives it two holding points on the end and two holding points in the metal to make it more sturdier. It helps keep it from coming apart because we're going to pack this full of hay yep. um, to keep the nest protected. Hog rings are a lot easier. These clips are kind of hard to maneuver. Yeah, they're, they're not the best thing, but... We happen to have these, so we're using what we have just because we have a whole bunch of them. And like I said, we're going to do a ton of boxes and stuff, or a ton of tubes. Um, and it's just one last thing that we have to go out and get. All right, so for anybody who's curious why we cut uh, wrapped it at a three-foot um, piece, it's because you want this inner diameter tube to be 12 inches so you want this to be 12 inches so and uh in diameter that way it's big enough to fit the the hen yeah the, and the drake will will sit on top of it and kind of keep watch while the hen is yeah or it'll sit in the water but uh the biggest thing too why you want to use the 16 gauge fencing is because um if a goose happens to land on top which happens um they can crush it if it's not this and the reason the other reason why you don't want to go any more than 12 inches is because we don't want geese getting inside of them so um now we're going to spread our hay out uh you want about two inches of hay on top of this fence and then we're going to roll it in and basically make a giant uh roll out of this so where we might not need all yeah. of this now you want it to cover everything so you want it to be, to be covered so that there's not like any open spaces. And we're just going to spread all this out. Over the whole thing. Kind of going to roll it like a sushi roll. Yep, pretty much. It's a giant sushi roll. You need a little more? Just a little more. Yeah, that's good. All right, and then you're gonna take this end and you're gonna roll it up into this. And this roll, you want to keep this roll pretty tight. Let me come on this side. I just don't want to fold it in on itself. Pocket. Stealing my clips, Corey. Just trying to keep them handy. <laughs> so this part's a little hard because it's uh, filled with hay. It's going to be a little bit um, spread out. So if you have a, a friend that can help you do this, it's going to be a little bit easier. The other thing you can do is uh, get a pair of welding pliers. 
um, that are the big giant C and you can clamp it together mm -hmm. and it'll hold itself. Uh, you can get a pair of channel locks or something like that, uh, vice grips and just hold the fencing together. So that, that way it's not trying to spring apart on you while you're clamping it together. So again, we're probably going to do one on the end, two in the middle. Yeah, we might do like five on this just because there's so there's quite a bit of pressure um, in that fencing there that wants to pop up from all the hay and such that we have in there. This is probably the hardest part about doing this. This is. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure in here trying to hold these two together. There we go. So like we talked about in the wood duck box, you know, it's it's important as hunters to be big advocates for conservation because, you know, we're the one that, you know, is honestly most worried about wildlife. We yeah. see the impacts of, of how um, degradation of, of natural wildlife preserves for these species can get. And we can and we can tell when we're hunting, you know, if there's a down population that year, you, you can tell that they didn't have a good hatch. Um, and that's probably due to a lack of environment for them to, to raise their, their young. And so stand up, kind of pack the edges in. If you need to throw a little extra in there. Basically, the straw on the outside helps protect them from the elements and stuff. You know, that's what it's there for. And they won't really use it. They're not going to really use it after the, the younger hatches. But um, they do use it, you know, while they're in there uh, laying on the eggs. So... It also um, helps keep their eggs insulated. Yes, yeah, um, that's another big thing. Like you probably had classes where you hatched eggs in an incubator, you know. This straw is a really good insulation filler, so it can help them keep their eggs warm while they're sitting on them. So it's important to get as much down packed in there as possible. And then each year you want to go out um, and you do have to kind of do some maintenance on these. You should go out and replace the timothy hay that's in there. Yep. Mallards will never, you know, carry any bedding material with them. Whatever they use, is, it's what they find at the, at the nesting spot. So, um, you want to make sure that you provide new bedding material as you would with the wood duck nesting box each year. So, now last but not least, um, I told you guys we were going to try and round this out a little bit. And basically, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make sure there's no bubbles on the inside. Or sharp spots. Like yep. I just see the pliers. So it's good to check to make sure that there are no sharp pieces of metal because they get in there. They won't use it if something's poking them in the butt. Right. Or you don't want them to get injured either. So yeah. So every, every spot you can find is that metal can be pretty sharp. Yeah. So it is, it is round, pretty sharp. You just want to round those edges off. That looks pretty good. All right. All right, so if you can see here, it's almost got kind of a heart shape to it. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to kind of take it and just turn it and push on it a little bit. And it'll kind of round it out. And you'll see it's not so heart shaped anymore. It's more so, um, as for mounting with these, there's a couple different things you can do. Um, what we are going to do, we'll add a new video, video of this um, later this week, is we're going to make an actual metal post with rebar that curls up around the sides, and then the um, nesting tube is attached to the rebar. Mm -hmm. It's more structurally sound than, say, a board, and um, it'll last a lot longer. Boards rot and stuff, they fall apart and uh, eventually, you know, it's gonna have to be replaced. You don't want the nesting tube to fall in the water. Yep. You don't want it to fall in the water before the duck gets to it, or when she's in there on her nest, or afterwards, because then you gotta, you gotta make another one, um, which and, isn't a bad thing, yeah. but we wanted to make another one to put somewhere else. 
So the best thing you can do, and we'll upload a new video on this uh, this coming week. Um, I didn't have my welder this week, a buddy of mine's borrowing it, but uh, is how to make the, the metal post. And you can do it without a welder. We're going to show you both ways. Um, we're going to weld ours though. Since I have the, you know, access to doing that, we're going to do that just because it works the best. You can use a board though. So with the board, um, I'm using this two by four, for example, you'd want more of a plank to put underneath to provide more support, but you want it to run from one end to the other and then stick out a little bit on either end. And then you'll attach that to a post and sink it into the marsh. So um, we'll go over that a little bit more when we do the, the metal posts, but um, that'll be mainly concentrated on that. But as for making the actual nesting tube, that is how it goes. So if you guys have any questions, comments, um, things we could do better, things you could have done better, we're open to criticism. Mm -hmm. um, if you have anything you'd like to see us do a video on, whether it's hunting, fishing, conservation stuff, um, you know, things we can do for ducks, geese, turkeys, whatever, you let us know. If we don't, you know, we're a little less proficient in that area, we'll do our research and we'll bring you guys a video. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys just gotta let us know. Yeah, as you, I mean, as you could see that we took it a little bit slower because we were explaining some stuff, but this takes uh, we us made about, we made this one in about seven minutes, um, that one in about ten minutes. So yeah, uh, that was that was one of our first ones we made. So we were still getting used to it, but yeah, I mean they they don't take very long to do. Um, and the more you do, the better you get at them. So you could probably crank one of these out in under five minutes if you get really good at it. Um, yeah, and it's just it's a good thing to do. Um being hunters you know we we want to take care of our hunting land yep. um if you do want to go put these if you don't have any private areas to put them on and you want to put them on a public land reach out to your conservation office your dnr your um uh even like the park rangers yeah, um, they will township, they will have those resources um, you can reach out to your township authority and see if they would be okay with you putting it up mm -hmm. on a pond at a township park yep um just for a little insight, I uh, every day um, while I'm working, I, I pass a, uh, a little pond. And I kid you not, it's not bigger than like 10 by 10. It's just this little marshland. It's all fenced in. The actual marsh itself is probably about 30 feet by 30 feet. Mm -hmm. And it's all completely fenced in. And every day, there's a little bit of standing water, probably three times the size of this table. Every day, I look in there. And finally, the other day, I, I saw a pair of ducks in there. But... You know, that obviously probably has enough um, nesting area mm -hmm. that they can nest. But if, you know, maybe there's a pond that doesn't, it's completely mowed around it at the township park, but you see ducks there every once in a while. Um, reach out to your township and ask to put one of these out. Just because you can't hunt where it's at doesn't mean it doesn't benefit the wildlife. Yep. So um, that's it for today, guys. Um, like I said, questions, comments, concerns, you know. Don't, don't hesitate don't to hesitate. reach out. Yeah. Feel free to criticize whatever you guys think. You know, we're making these videos for you guys. So we want your opinion on, you know, how we're doing and stuff. And if there's anything you guys want to see. But thank you very much, guys. Thank you.